if you're trying to like educate your doctor, if they're willing and able, cool, you know, send them this podcast. Hopefully they're open to integrating some of these things into their practice. But often we've had many people that have been the GI doctors, five, 10, 15 doctors before they come to somebody like us. And unfortunately yep. they've had very poor testing and they've had very poor treatment. That's why they're still needing help. And we're usually at the end of the rope, which you would think puts a ton of pressure on us, but I think you and I are used to it. And I actually enjoy it because in contrast, what we do makes the other people look silly and our success rate is so good that it's really, it's, it's a blessing to, to be able to have some of these tools on hand. And it's really fun and inspiring to be able to give people hope. And some of these chronic GI issues like heartburn or reflux or GERD or some of these esophageal problems, like what they call uh, you know, like issues with the LES, the lower esophageal sphincter that can become very traumatic. And people think their surgery or drug is the answer, but we don't have to go there in the majority of cases. Yeah. And also when you start to have, you know, a lot of dyspepsia, that's like the bloating, that's the nausea, the burping, the belching. When you start to have that, right, that lack of acidity in the intestines, if you have a lack of acidity, you also have a lack of enzymes more than likely because acidity is an important trigger for enzyme activation, right? Because a lot of our enzymes are pH sensitive. So if we don't have a nice low pH, they're not going to activate. And also that bacterial overgrowth. And you can look at bacterial overgrowth in the stomach, usually via a um, glucose breath test. Now, the conventional breath test that we use for like SIBO is we'll use a lactulose blood test or lactulose breath test where you swallow a lactulose solution. And then you're going you're gonna to blow into a bag and you're going to get a baseline and then you're going to swallow the lactulose solution and you're going to blow every 20 minutes. And you can sometimes see an increase in gas in that first 20 to 40 minutes, usually being reflective of the stomach area. Um, usually in that first 120 minutes gives you more of the small intestine. And if you do a glucose breath test, that's going to give you more of a window into what's happening in the stomach. Now, typically what we do is I'm doing more of a stool test and I'm getting a, a global look at bacterial overgrowth in the intestinal tract as a whole. Obviously when we're testing stool, it's all moving through the intestine. So you can't say, Oh, that bacteria is in that part of the intestine or that part of the colon or that part of the, the, the stomach. You can't really do that because it's all moving its way out and getting mixed up. Right? So a breath test could be helpful for that. Now for me, it doesn't necessarily change a lot of what I'm going to do. Cause if I see, Hey, there's a lot of Klebsiella, or citrobacter, or I see some H. pylori, or I see a lot of organic acid showing hipparate or, 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 fenzo, or um, um, benzoate, right? Or 2,3-phenylacetate, right? Different markers, indican, and that tells me we got some problems, especially indican. Indican is one of those bacterial overgrowth markers that also has to do with more increased putrefied protein. So that's going to be a good indication that there's some stomach issue going on. And dyspepsia issue going on. So if I see that, that's going to kind of gear me in that direction to be focused on addressing the stomach. And when we do herbs, guess what? You can't just target one part of the intestine. When you give these herbs, it's going to move its way through. Some of these herbs are going to target things more specific to H. pylori, like mastic gum or bismuth. But obviously some of those are still going to have general antimicrobial benefits that will move down the entire intestinal tract. And some even have anti- parasitic benefits too. So it's hard to just target things. We do know there's a history of herbs that tend to be more selective to certain things in the intestinal tract. Yeah. Great, great, great segue.